Kishigatami's Mustard Seed Kishigatami came from a poor family, but the son of a wealthy family loved her and married her. Her in-laws treated her unkindly because of her background, but when she gave birth to a son, they finally respected her. Then, when the child was a toddler, he died, and Kishigatami went mad with grief. She carried the dead child from house to house, begging for medicine to make him well, and everyone sent her away, saying, The child is dead. No medicine can help him. At last, a kind man directed her to the Buddha. The Buddha said, I will give you medicine to revive your child if you bring me a mustard seed from a house where no one has died. With renewed hope, Kishigatami went forth to get the mustard seed, but at every house she learned that someone had died. And so, still carrying her child's body in her arms, she returned to the Buddha. Did you bring me a mustard seed? he asked her. I thought that death had happened only to my little son, but now I understand that it happens to everyone. Impermanence is the universal law. She buried her child in the forest and returned to the Buddha to receive ordination. Christina Feldman's Reflection Kishigatami's story is the story of every mother who loses a child, the story of every human being who knows in their heart that to love, cherish, and care for another is to risk heartache and loss. As women, we hold in our lives a timeless human dilemma. To know how to love wholeheartedly and deeply, and to know how to lose that which we love with compassion and wisdom. The Buddha did not admonish Kishigatami for her grief and distress, nor did he lecture her on the inarguable laws of impermanence. Instead, he sent her into the village to find even one person who did not know the barren landscape of grief the deep painfulness of being separated from those one holds most dear. Every home she went to, every person she spoke to, only revealed to her how vast is the landscape of loss. Each of us holds within us a personal story and a universal story. Our personal story born of all that we have experienced and felt in this life, is unique to us, our families, our joys and sorrows, our values, aspirations, and hopes, our disappointments. The countless events of our lives have shaped who we are and how we see in ways that no single other human being can know. But when we understand that our personal story holds within it the universal story of all human beings, then we have the radical possibility of dissolving the boundaries of I and you, us and them. Kishigatami's realization that all mothers could experience just the same pain as she experienced did not necessarily diminish her grief but she came to understand that she was not alone. She began to accept that which had felt so deeply unacceptable. By acknowledging this, she embarked upon a path of seeking an unshakable inner freedom. So much of the path of liberation is woven into the story of Kishigatami. Some of the most profound insights that liberate our hearts from struggle are found within the most deeply challenging moments of our lives. When our worlds crumble and our certainties dissolve, we face a choice to turn toward those moments with compassion or to flee. Our own experience tells us again and again that flight will almost certainly ensure 
we find neither healing nor freedom. Impermanence is the law that governs all experience. We live with our feet on shifting sands that can crumble beneath us in a moment. Loss, death, and separation reveal to us so poignantly that as long as we are misaligned with this core truth, we will live in a state of argument with our lives. To embrace this truth of impermanence wholeheartedly, deeply, and unshakably will not save us from grief, but will perhaps teach us to embrace the moments of deepest pain in our lives without dispute. I do not imagine that Kishigatami's embracing of a nun's life meant an end to her grieving. The memory of her son must have lived on in her heart and in her very bones, but perhaps the pain could be born. The Buddhist teachings of impermanence and equanimity show us how to live in this world of uncertainty without being shattered. None of us can control the world of conditions that are intrinsically unstable. We can learn to cultivate an inner poise that allows us to be a conscious participant in this life without our hearts being hostage to conditions. A few lines from a Sri Lankan text on equanimity tell us, Life is a play of joy and sorrow. May I remain unshaken by life's rise and fall. I care for you deeply, but sadly I cannot protect you from distress. 